Bitcoin will actually benefit by having some of the bad actors regulated, disclosed, and out of the scene. Because the SEC really is good at disclosure and consumer protection. So regulation is actually good for Bitcoin because among all the cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin is going to emerge as the gold standard. Some people, they don't understand the difference between Bitcoin and an altcoin. One of the people who I think really understands that is Gary Gensler, who's the head of the SEC. And his voice on these issues is going to be important uh, within this administration. So as, uh, as soon as more of the bad actors can be dismissed, the better it looks for Bitcoin. There are a lot of altcoins that are just fraudulent. They are scams. Hey, hey, everybody. It's Eddie from Tokyo. This is your cryptocurrency update from Japan. And that was Senator Lummis. Yes, that is what a maxi sounds like. A maxi of any sort is not good for cryptocurrency. It's not good for the adoption. It's not good for this entire new asset class. Now, in this video, of course, I'm going to talk about CZ. It's left me unusually down today. I want to share with you a Ripple investment that went live and XRP is a part of the rewards for retail investors. Also, you need to know something about the Ripple IPO analysis. And an interesting bit of inside information about the Bank of Canada researchers that are very interested in anonymous wallets and anonymous smart contracts will take you out on this video. Okay, everybody, let's go. Okay, first, let's talk about CZ. First, there was no misappropriation of funds. There was no market manipulation. There was no securities laws broken. So he broke some sanction laws. I see. Let me point out just one of those sanction laws that were broken. Here's one from this year. Wells Fargo, 124 violations of three different sanction programs. Not one, not two, but three programs. They were fined 30 million. Finance was fined 4 billion. And Senator Warren, yeah, she was in her best form, calling the kettle black. She said that the CEO of the world's largest crypto exchange pleaded guilty to breaking anti-money laundering laws. Well, yeah, let's just talk about the banks, shall we? This is a part of a larger trend of criminal activity in the crypto industry and sadly predictable. I urged the Justice Department to investigate Binance for lying to Congress. Well, crypto law let her know about lying to Congress. When are you going to investigate Jay Clayton and William Hinman? Oh, right. Never. The announcement made by our government representatives really left me depressed today and it's not usual every day i'm hit with bad price action trolls everywhere i look extremely disturbing global news but what happened to cz hit me hard his replacement is richard tang he will now take over the world's largest exchange he's a singaporean veteran he has been in various roles at Binance since 2021. Previously, he served as the CEO of the Financial Services Regulatory Authority in Abu Dhabi at their global market. And he also had a position at the Monetary Authority of Singapore. This is the finance watchdog. It's like equivalent to our SEC. He's highly qualified three decades of financial services and regulatory experience. I think he was a wonderful pick. I'm sorry I missed him in Tokyo at WebEx. This is the same time that David Schwartz and Emi Yoshikawa and some other Ripplers were here. 
Maybe Moonchaser was able to see him speak, but I missed it. According to Jungle Inc., CZ can return as CEO after 36 months. The DOJ basically sidelined him for the next bull run. And this essentially is the same penalty XRP holders got in December 2020. It's brutal stuff. Let me move to a happy subject. I want to talk about the root network. This is what Futureverse runs on. The metaverse that Ripple invested into, along with the famous investor Dan Tapiero. The Root Network is a public decentralized blockchain for metaverse apps, games, and experience that has a Root token. And this token just went live in the last two days, trading on KuCoin, Bybit, and Gate.io. This is a layer one integrated with the Ethereum virtual machine, so it has smart contracts. Yes, it has bridges, but it's also integrated with the XRP ledger and the XRP digital asset plays a part in this ecosystem. The root network is a proof of stake blockchain. So there is staking and you stake that root token and receive rewards for participating. Anyone can use root tokens to get involved. For early participants, the root network has allocated 10% of the total root supply for the first 260 weeks as an additional bootstrap reward. I am staking, and at the time when I listed this on the X platform, it was just a little over 400,000 XRP in the current cycle, but you can see just in a few hours, it's now 404. Now the tokenomics, this is what's called the vortex. So gas and network fees are collected during the reward cycle and transferred into the vortex. So these tokens, which you saw above, become part of the reward cycle and participants are rewarded with newly minted vortex tokens based on their stake and participation in the network. And with the bootstrap rewards for the tokenomics, these rewards are calculated based on the root staked and are also transferred into this vortex. You can see the percentage of the tokens in the pool here. And yes, Ethereum is also included. If this is the first time that you've really heard about this, there are plenty of sources out there. First and foremost, get on the platform and follow Aaron McDonald. He does have an up and coming AMA with KuCoin where he will lay out his vision, but there are plenty of YouTubers that are specializing just in Futureverse and the root token. We keep it moving. So there's an interesting article that has a feature about Ripple, CTO, that would be David Schwartz, blames the delayed IPO on US regulatory challenges. <laughs> I just have to laugh because when I use the word delayed in one of my titles, I got a lot of pushback on that. Well, there is a delay and yes, we can blame the US regulatory challenges. There's a fantastic update on Ripple and the IPO and just the company in general. This analysis is fantastic. And I want to highlight the one portion for the Ripple IPO. This is from the IPO Club blog. And you can see in their opinion, it's going to take until the end of 2024 for the SEC case to be resolved. And this means that Ripple will be able to resume its path to an IPO after that case has been resolved. Now, I know a lot of people in the US are traveling because this is the busiest time of year to travel for Thanksgiving. I wish everyone a wonderful holiday, but be safe out there. You're looking at the 405 in LA. I used to live about 10 minutes from this freeway. Oh, I don't think I ever saw it this bad. Now I'm going to let the head of partnerships at BTQ take this video out. It was, uh, if, you've, if you're curious to see more of this, it was part of my yesterday's video.
but I feel like we get a little inside scoop as they have been talking to the Bank of Canada and they are talking about anonymous smart contracts and anonymous wallets. Very interesting. All right, everybody, do take care. Sayonara for now. Bye-bye. Even within a secured, encryption, uh, a secured encryption channel, you can selectively reveal only parts of the information that you're willing to disclose. And this will be, uh, we, we, we imagine this will have huge effects and huge use cases in CBDCs. So we've actually had some conversations with the Bank of Canada recently uh, with researchers there, and, and they are very interested in anonymous smart contracts, anonymous wallets, in order to set up these you know, guard ra guardrails for when a transaction is broadcasted across a CBDC network, uh, certainly to external parties, they need to have a privacy aspect and to make sure that those transactions and all of the information in those transactions aren't being available, aren't becoming available to a quantum adversary.